Hi, this is a uh, under pressure part two, and I'm going to explain to you the kind of complicated, a very simplified version of the complicated process that breathing is, and how the way you breathe affects the different pressure systems in your body. So this is your thoracic cavity, and it is separated from your abdominal cavity by your diaphragm. So you want to kind of imagine a a flat, slightly dome-shaped muscle that separates the thoracic from the abdominal cavity. In order to get oxygen to come into your body, you have to drop the pressure that is within your thoracic cavity. So there's um, one main way that you do that, and that is by increasing the volume or the capacity of the thoracic cavity. So this essentially has to get larger somehow. This is fairly fixed, but there's a couple different ways that your body does that. So there, there's, there's three main ways that we can do that. The first one is we can elevate the shoulder girdle. So you can breathe inhaling like this, which is fine, except that if you're constantly inhaling by elevating your shoulders up and down, you end up in the long term doing a lot of disc damage and vertebral damage at the cervical vertebra, so the vertebra in the neck. And it also causes a lot of tension in the muscles kind of around the jaw not the most preferred way to breathe, but still breathing um, trumps everything. So you're going to get oxygen in, in whatever mechanism is easiest for you. The second way is the downward motion, this plunge of the diaphragm. Now, this is kind of the textbook way that we learn breathing works, right? You have the diaphragm drop down, which then increases the space, right? If this was a dome and it dropped down, so wherever the dome was, the distance between where it was and where it is after that happens makes this space larger, which then brings oxygen in. Now, if we were just ribs walking around with heads, that wouldn't be such a big deal. But your abdominal cavity is right below. So if you're increasing the space that is um, of the thoracic cavity, you're going to be decreasing the space in the abdominal cavity. So that increases the pressure inside the abdomen with every breath that you take. And so you can deal with that extra pressure in a couple different ways. One, you can let the front of the abdomen release out in front. So you might have heard something called belly breathing where the belly is coming out and in with every single breath. Um, and you, or you can also take this kind of continuation of high pressure and push down on the pelvic floor. So either way, when you breathe with your only with your diaphragm, you end up, I don't know why I quote, it's really a diaphragm. It's not, you know, a diaphragm. It's a diaphragm. I put my hands in my pockets. You have this high level of intra-abdominal pressure and an increase in pelvic pressure. So this repeated way of breathing is like a plunger on the organs within your pelvis. So it's not a good way to breathe if you have pelvic floor issue. It's not a really good way to breathe if you don't have a pelvic floor issue, if you want to prevent one. Because every time your abdominals kind of relax out or open out in front of you, it means that your transverse abdominal is not firing, which means that you don't have the support to your lumbar spine. So it's really important the way that you breathe. Now in a lot of research, um, when they're looking at how people, how pelvic floors function, they'll talk about kind of like the breathing pelvic floor. So as you take breaths in and out, you have this high activity that happens with every single breath. And it's getting kind of written as that's the way it's supposed to be. But you don't want your pelvic floor to have to stay tight against this constant downward plunge. It's better to remove the plunge, which you can do if you breathe in this third way. So here is a rib cage. Let's say that we don't want it to come up to squish the discs in the neck, and we don't want the diaphragm to drop down, increasing the intra-abdominal pressure which then has any other pressure, um, it aggravates any other pressure-related ailment, including pelvic floor issues. So if you imagine where I'm hugging him, this circle that goes all the way around, if you looked down at that circle, the third way is to get that circle to widen or open up. So in between every single rib, you have a set of muscles called your intracostals. And these muscles can actually flip the... Uh, rib cage open on its side. So it's a very small motion. It can only hinge as far or the distance that the rib is long. And it's pretty small. I mean, you're talking uh, maybe a half an inch unless you've got some super beefy ribs that I don't know about. But this subtle kind of rib action, it's a torsional rotation, which means they're 
they're torquing open. As you look down the rib cage, the circumference gets larger, which means the, the uh, volume of air gets greater without any sort of downward plunging and any sort of upward smashing. You get this kind of exchange. So that's why shoulder girdle work is really, really important when it comes to any sort of intra-abdominal or pelvic floor issue. Because the reason we don't breathe with our rib cage right now is because, one, how tight the chest and the shoulders are, this kind of forward motion. And then the second reason why, and this is kind of oversimplified for um, a blog post, is the standing with the ribs lifted. If you stand with your ribs lifted, you're taking all of the ribs in the back. I'm just going to turn my living room skeleton around. It was super strong. You end up compressing that. So the, the rib cage does not have the ability to open and close in the way that it should to breathe optimally. So as we continue down this journey of alignment <laughs> and aerobics, just kidding, um, what we're going to find is I'm going to keep talking to you about your strength weight ratio on the upstairs as well. It's like, but I have pelvic floor disorder, I don't have a shoulder problem. It's like, well, you have a breathing problem. And the breathing problem is a large habit that you have because you're breathing really more than you do anything, including walking. The breathing is the habit that could, in fact, be ground zero, which is why stress is a large component of any sort of ailment because it affects the way you breathe, the mechanics of the way you breathe, and when you breathe with a non-optimal mechanical um, habit, then there's some other sort of mechanical tax. All right? See you later.